time to light the candle of amazement. It's time to light the candle of incredibility. It's time to light the candle of awesomeness. Who is the living Lord God, our majesty and majesties, who arises in the splendor of his magnificence? He is the beneficent standing upon the great white cloud of Revelation 14, sending forth his everlasting gospel and his everlasting gospel writer, who I am, the latter-day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, that says the latter-day, L-A-T-T-E-R. And in the latter days, God's word comes forth anew. It says so in the latter days. And he says, I shall return your terrifying, my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if you will arise in love and a brotherhood of man that I prayed for in Gethsemane. That is what he is saying in the latter days. It says so, Jeremiah 30, 24. And in the latter days, L-A-T-T-E-R, comes the mountain of Isaiah 2 <laughs> and the mountain of Isaiah 4 uh, or uh, Micah 4 in the latter days. It says so, latter so praise the Lord that this is the latter day mountain. There is no literal mountain that's going to arise in the latter days. Come on, people. It's always been metaphoric, a mountain of faith. And I've created over 1,200 videos in four months because I am the everlasting gospel writer of the everlasting gospel <laughs> that's foretold to contain a new creation covenant, uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18, Revelation 14. First video under this uh, channel and maybe about 20 back also. I've re-recorded re it uh, probably three, four times so far. So praise the Lord that uh, the Lord is having his way and, and the clouds are but dust under his feet. And uh, the everlasting gospel is foretold to contain the... Um, message of the messenger of Malachi 3 1 it's foretold to contain the everlasting covenant of Jeremiah 31 the covenant messenger uh, in Malachi 3 1 that is not Jesus he is the mediator of the covenant he is the writer thereof he's the one who sent it to the world but it has been sent to his messenger the messenger of the covenant am I the latter day Daniel so a uh, destructive time of turbulence has come with the, the trial of all flesh, COVID-13, Revelation uh, 3, foretold to bring God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation to ignore his message. Because I speak with all authority and the scepter of all authority has left Judah because I am Shiloh, whose eyes are dull and red of wine. I'm alcoholic. I had been alcoholic all my life, well, since I was 16. But these forthcoming days of the Lord's holy judgments shall also be frightful ones of Jehovah's most wrathful vengeance. But you know what? If, if, if you understand the word of God, all the vengeance talk, it's all metaphoric. And I have taken after the other. Uh, gospel writers, but he only wants to bring freedom and, and uh, um, relief from all troubles. That's why he stands and says, I will return my terrifying anger if you give me the desire of my heart. He's doing the same thing now that he did back in Jonah 3 when he said, I'm going to destroy Nineveh within 40 days, count them, 10 days, 40, four times, 40 days. And uh, unless they turn around, and, but they did, and then he did not destroy them. If the hearts of the fathers turn to the children, children to the fathers, this world will not be hit with utter destruction because the opposite will happen. That's what it says if people will not turn to each other in love and arise. So uh, these can be very frightful ones of Jehovah's most wrathful vengeance. And his vengeance is by not interfering. When he has vengeance and wrath, it's by not interfering. It's by not interfering unto those daring not to magnify his most incredible light of love, which would save us from all of our problems. And it is he who shall swiftly come forth with his fast peaking dawn of holiness, because he is the sun of rise, arising, 
the Son of Love, the Son of Righteousness. And in His light it is revealed that all of our righteousness has been as filthy rags. All of our understanding or twisted understandings of anything concerning the divine have all been of no importance to His transcendent love that has transcended over all of our uh, mixed up understandings. Because the Word of God was only uh, veiled. We only saw through a glass darkly. We only knew in part. And now the wise may finally shine as the stars they were created to be as all revelation come, comes forth concerning even that we are angels in the flesh. And that was predicted that it would come forth in the latter days. Watch my last video. And even now, His Majesty of Majesties, our holy luminosity of the heavens, is allowing His brightest glory to freely shine through the firmament's opening doorway, which is now appearing as a single ray of blessedness at the horizon's base. So let the tide of church history and mosque history and synagogue history now swiftly turn, O beloved souls of the Lord's truest truths, that he has always been God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. The mystery of God of Revelation 10, 7 is over, and when the seven trumpets sounded out of order, because the first was last, last is first, what happened was that all nations immediately became the Lord's. Why? Because they were always as Jeremiah 32, 27, I'm the Lord God of all mankind. And in these latter days, he arises as the good shepherd over all the flocks of men. And they shall come unto him, even the ones that hated him, that would not listen to him before. Because his voice has been fixed, all things have been restored, including the truest voice of the master who had his voice changed by mankind, taking a perfectly good everlasting covenant taken out of place, out of time. It was written for the latter days. It says so, Jeremiah 32, 27. And, um, but they insert it, but you must do or believe something. And they added condemnation to his voice, and they corrupted his everlasting covenant. So let the chosen children of quiet therefore become loud, and let the meek also become most annoyed, and let them now be encouraged to roar like they're in the courageous pride of the line of Judah. That's why I wear this little wig. I grew it myself. It's my hair. And I grew it last year. It got too hot. But guess what? Uh, he doesn't want no more stupid sheep. Sure, he's the good shepherd of all the flocks, but he wants people to be a pride, have courage like a, a family of lions. That's the name of a family of lions is a pride. And he is the roaring lion of Zion who's roaring that the vision of Habakkuk 2, King James, has come forth. Behold, he whose soul is not upright, but the just shall live by my faith, even though I've been transgressed by wine, even though I'm the Shiloh of Genesis 49.12 whose eyes are dull and red of wine, and unto me shall all the world's obedience turn, because it is obedience unto Christ through me. It's got nothing to do with me. And it says, uh, And I shall become as greedy as hell and shall never be satisfied as I gather everybody in the world towards this one world religion of the good shepherd of all the flocks of man. And it is he that is important. I am but the servant of Isaiah 49.4 one who has wasted all of his time in vain for love, I, I, everything that I did, um, even my writings, I couldn't give them away for 20 years. Nobody had boots deep enough for my kind of exaltation of our beloved God of love. To them, it was just shit. Distress and the sound of war has my ear heard. And now the hour of the Lord's wrath draws near. If people will not listen to my voice and begin to obey the, the, the word of God from Habakkuk 2.2, 2, it's time for the wheat to leave the tares. People that will believe prophecy uh, to leave those who will not. End of story. That's it. Because uh, the others are arrogant and proud and they have no root or branch left to hold on to. Uh, this says the word of God in uh, Malachi 4 of this uh, age. For the day of the Lord draws nigh for his people of inner brilliance of love, whom he has much pity upon. 
And as the heavenly trumps blow near and far, sanctify now, O Lord, the removal of those who are hot of soul and spirit from those who are lukewarm and cold of heart, the walking dead, even my own children, I've got five children, they're all walking dead. They want to know nothing about uh, the glory of God. And anyone that doesn't, their love is on uh, starting to die because their love has wavered. If you, if you cannot, you cannot love people around you unless you can love the Lord who you cannot see. And it's the conditional time when the weeds no more can grow freely among uh, the grass of the spiritual fields of wheat. And that holds most true if such fields are only being tended by uncaring husbandmen who desires not to be open-minded to what is truth, thereby making a mockery of all that is true indeed. But if the leadership of any house or synagogue or mosque is true uh, and respects and values truth, only then should any weeds be allowed to freely grow under any watchful eyes. Muhammad said, You have no ground to stand upon unless you stand firm upon the law, the gospel, and all revelation that comes unto you from the Lord. Paul the Apostle wrote concerning prophetic words such as these. Um, it must be uh, examined most carefully and all that's good embraced. People will are so damn religious they will not even look at nothing. And if they're spitting at me, they're spitting at Christ because I am the legitimate messenger of Malachi 3.1 that is preparing the Lord's way by bringing forth the most perfect preparation of his kingdom age peace, which is the, the true uh, kingdom age covenant that was foretold for the latter days, Jeremiah 30, 24. Thus saith the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, this is the will of God the Most High, for true leader of light shall prune away anything undesirable needing to be attended to without any heavenly direction even being being needed but if they will not open their ears to prophecy and if they do not believe then they are the blind leading the blind and they must be left behind but woe unto those remaining subjected to some religious people of tattered cloth because people we have a world of racism and it's fueled by uh, factories of spiritual racism if you're in any religion where you're it's your happy, happy, joy, joy club. And if people don't join your club, they're damned or they're cursed. They're not on as good a level as you. Because guess what? Uh, God is not a respecter of men. And anyone that has that kind of crooked religion, uh, desolate heritage religion of Isaiah 49, 8, uh, they are creating racists right under spiritual racists. That's why people don't like each other. It's because of what they believe, not what uh, how they dress or how they act. <sighs> Such people against this, they're spitting at Christ and they have no discernment. And they only have closed eyes. So the wheat are the open-minded, the open-hearted, uh, the, the people that will unite in love. The, the tares are the shallow as a glass of water people. They are the people that cannot receive the flood of love that God is flowing right now through this ministry into the world. Upon this mountain, all shame and, and uh, disgrace of all people of the world shall be removed by revealed knowledge of the Lamb that he is sending right now. And if people stay where they are, it is better for such non-sighted sheep following such blind and deaf shepherds uh, to meet up with some hungry wolves just to spare them from the needed anticipation of inevitable agony later on that would befall them because of their attitudes that just suck big time. Lack of knowledge always destroys. Uh, that is what God foretold in uh, Hosea 4, 6. For the spiritual ignorance sustaining people's stupidity only causes misled souls to fall under the drool of such ravenous predators anyways, like like wolves in sheep's clothing, as they continually lurk about in the midst of the dark nights of their soul, so they can remain unseen. And if any flocks of the Lord's sheep are being led by the narrow-minded, 
who aren't respecters of truth. Such mindless sheep following such ignorant shepherds will just end up heading towards the most bitter and ugly ends, abruptly taking them to regrettable places where no escape is possible. Death, as Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, as Moses predicted for the one that does not follow Elijah. That is a true prophecy. And yet, all of this could be avoided if only those lambs would celebrate, the wheat would celebrate from the unruly ram teachers and uh, uh, people that they have looked to in leadership who do not believe the word of God. If you don't take the good fruit out of the bowl when there's bad fruit in it, all the fruit is going to go bad, people. So it's time for the extraction that must come before Christ's return. It says so in Second Thessalonians that the falling away must happen before Christ's return. But it's not the bad leaving the good, it's the good leaving the bad. By the roaring roar of Isa Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah of all mankind, the wheat and the tares cannot grow together once his harvest begins. And I am the bringer thereof. And he is the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken his reaper, Amos 9. So it's time to be removed from unruly rams surrounding people on all sides, the proud and the arrogant who have no root or branch left to hold on to. Nor should the pride of Christ, the flocks of Christ, ever fail to remember that such pitiful religious rams like Pharisees of old vipers are they. They will always disguise themselves as sheep because their real appearance is right out of some horror stories of some man-eating wolves. Now, I got a... Uh, and they would say, and what big things do you truly have? Wow. This is not about who's saved and who's not saved. We're all saved according to the everlasting covenant unless we commit blaspheme of the Holy Spirit, unforgivable sin, let our light of love go out, then we would perish like the to hell. <laughs> that is the truth. But other than that, this is not about salvation. Salvation is our inheritance. We are the children of God. We are angels in the flesh. The glory of the latter house greater than that of the former. The first are last, the last are first. We are first because we were created last. And uh, we've always known in the Bible that it says, uh, if, if you well, Google it, it does say that in the afterlife we'd be like the angels, sexless, neither male nor female. That's because we are angels. That's why Jesus told we were in, uh, told us we were in John 10. He said, you are gods, John 10. You are gods. There's never been any other gods. He, what he was saying is we are angels in the flesh. We are angels is the name that he has given me. And uh, goats are extremely stubborn. Understand well that any soul is only a ram if it willingly exists in the darkness of ignorance. There is no darkness but ignorance alone. There is no darkness but ignorance alone. Did you know that William Shakespeare was a prophet? There is no ignorance but, uh, there is no darkness but ignorance alone. There is no ignorance but darkness alone. Works either way. There is no darkness but ignorance alone. <laughs> Guess what Satan's name has been before his removal? Ignorance. So if, if people are wanting to be ignoramus and ignorant to God's word, they will shut this channel right down. Uh, the suicidal people of God, letting their light of love go out. Consecrate, therefore, an acceptable fast, said the Lord, for by way of such spiritual discernment may be increased, but understanding that fasting and spiritual watching uh, are also united, one within the other, that if one breaks the watch, straight away the fast is broken. People need teaching on fasting. A sinning man breaking the fast of the soul and forgets God, and so it is that watching and fasting while guarding the soul carefully is always necessary for all people of light of love, uh, since none to none is it lawful to sin, and yet he forgives it all. 
But concerning the fasting, unless it's the unforgivable sin, there is no redemption from that. If we let our light of love go out, we have no more light for our next angelic bodies that are made of the light of love. And we are the most beautiful butterflies of all. But concerning the fasting of the body and its watchings, that's not possible all times, nor for all persons. Uh, for there are sick and aged among us, women and children, uh, men that have to be on special diet. So people have to be careful. Don't go overboard with fasting. You can hurt yourself, says Daniel. I've done it. And uh, others that are a weak complexion, low blood pressure, whatever, medical issues, you cannot fast. You can still fast, but in other ways. Even as a man clothes himself according to his proper measure, so should he choose his manner of fasting. For just as the garments of a child are not suitable for a man, even so the watchings and fastings of one are not always suitable for another. And never should any followers of God's light ever forget that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word coming forth out of the mouth of God. Pray therefore that every soul embarking on a spirit-led steeplechase for the truest truths of our truth of glory should now open their minds as they give their right ear to the brightest word of love ablaze through our light of light's holy fire, the kingdom age fire, and uh, their left ear uh, to his message coming as a wishing star. And I am the bringing of the message of uh, Christ. And if anyone wants to snub me, go ahead, but you are snubbing Christ. I I'm just the messenger. And if this message from him is of no importance, ignore me. And by doing so, you are standing in the line of the lawless one, uh, the revealed Antichrist to be, who has uh, the 666 right on his wall, more official. His name is Death. And I, I couldn't have scripted that any better. Know that only our shining star of hope uh, could his faithful few, only to him could they entrust all of their fondest dreams of love unto. Our comforter transforms unto comfort. And by his decree, the Holy Spirit now comes forth appearing as the whitest cockatoo of the eras because he is finally free to speak about the end time declaration of Jesus Christ Almighty, Isa Yeshua Jesus. He is the dove of love and he's the most regal ego of God's honor that goes before him. No more shall the frustrating days for dark speech be ongoing. Uh, nor shall it be necessary because we no longer have to look through a glass darkly. I can see a little light on the other side, but it's, it's obscured. I cannot see clearly. And that is what has been pulled because in the beginning, all people, all nations, God was the God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. And in the end of the story, what happened? The seven trumpets sounded first out of order because the first is last, the last is first. And what happened was uh, all nations became the Lord's. They did immediately, you, yep, you, yep. because they were always the Lord's. It was just veiled. No more shall the frustrating days for dark speech need to be ongoing concerning high praises, and many followers shall say this I shall evermore offer up my thanksgiving and love while blessing your names, O beloved Lord God Almighty, who is love. Those who love are born of God and know God, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten love, so whosoever would love should never perish, but have everlasting life. So it's time to exalt the Lord and magnify him day in, day out by lifting him up. His love within uh, us lifts up higher and we come to up to a higher place of unity within him. So blessed are you, O Lord of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, and Jacob, for you are the great, the mighty, and the most revered, most high, who bestows loving kindnesses and possesses all things. For you remember the deeds of our patriarchs, and in love you will bring forth the Redeemer of the nations to their children's children for your very own namesake, O Allah, Elohim, Adonai, our carpenter of the ages. And by the way, Allah is now a sanctified name of God. Not a, it is no longer considered a title uh, through this messenger. And uh, this is Chrislam. And Chrislam is the name 
foretold to come in Isaiah 62 too, for Israel once they get their kingdom age covenant. So Israel is no longer Israel and for Judaism they are Chrislam. Whether they like it or not, that is their name that God has given them. Thus saith God. And I shall love you, O Lord Esau Yeshua Jesus. And by the way, Jesus never heard the name of Jesus. Never, not once. His name was Yeshua. The name of Jesus came much, much later. Uh, first came Joshua, meant Yeshua. They translated it to Joshua. And then the Latin name, hundreds of years later, became Jesus, substituted for Joshua. And that's how that went, uh, just as Yahweh became, became uh, Jehovah. So the truth is, uh, every knee shall bow unto the name of Jesus. Hell no. The name of Jesus that predated the name of Jesus, which he never heard, was a name that uh, John the Beloved gave him in uh, 1 John 4, 7. His name is love, and God is one, united within love. Every knee, every tongue shall uh, confess love. That is his name, and every knee shall bow unto love. Who is Jesus? Don't get technical. That's that's the problem. People are like, man, mm, petty. Uh, petty, petty, petty. So I shall love you, O Lord, Esau Yeshua, Jesus, love, with all of my heart and with all of my soul and with all of my might. And these words of love shall always be upon my heart most heavily as I teach them to my children. And I shall talk endlessly of your great glory, of your dove of love as I worship in your eternal temple next to the sapphire crystalline glass sea. He brings much joy, the living word of God. And once we know that he's unconditional love over one and all of us, as it is provable at this point, um, that will turn the hearts of orphans like me to my fathers. And that's part of turning the hearts of fathers to the children. Because there's a lot of people that don't know if their parents are saved. Did they believe? Did they not believe? It's never been about belief. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Uh, our all understanding of doctrine and uh, of anything about the divine is all unimportant c compared to his transcendent love that has overtaken uh, everything that we know. Um, he is love, and that is what he does best. He's the perfect God of love who only knows how to love. He does not know how not to love. That is what he does. He's the perfect God of love because he has perfectly good forgiveness. So Easter Yeshua Jesus will be letting his love aglow cheer up the hearts of his luminescent ones in, entrapped in the flesh. We are his most luminescent ones. We are the glory of his latter house. We are angels in the flesh. And what happened? God came to a world of angels in the flesh as Emmanuel, God in the flesh. It makes it a lot more interesting to think of it like that because it's true. And uh, his word now comes to, to trust that our unknown futures have always been in the hands of our all-knowing God. And that is, he is all-knowing. And with such trust, all of us who will place our trust in love will come to understand that he'll always be in our corner and never shall he be away from us. So now comes the time for a thermometer and uh, it, it's time that the world has a, a compass and uh, so it's time to lift up that holy one, to lift up that lofty one who allows his angelic cre created spirits, angels in the flesh, a glow to travel throughout the universes instantly within but a moment of a moment through millions of light years and but a flashing flash of a flash's brightest flash. So let everyone realize that we can now see that there's abundant room in our Lord's most lofty paradise for all of us, which overflows with sweet scents, uh, uh, the scent of spiritual fruits. Let all men therefore look upwards evermore and always, especially during these special days of God's rolling seven thunders that John uh, the, the, the beloved did not disclose uh, by the Lord's command. While his perfect trumpet, the seventh trumpet, uh, 
is now continually being blown on high as it calls everyone with love and faith to attention for Christ's great honor and glory and honor. The blessing is real, beloved. And uh, with that, I'm going to tell you, the, the climax of this message is in the next video, the blessing of God. Uh, do not miss this. This is the cliffhanger of blessings. So if you want blessedness and you want to know about our eternal blessing, uh, who is now pouring out his spirit upon absolutely all flesh as the book of Joel foretold, uh, don't miss it. If you snooze, you will lose. It's the truth.